was like Anne said, when we were asked a few weeks back, we would mind giving our testimonies. Very similarly, very filled with trepidation about standing in front of people, even though you're all our friends, it's still I admire those people who can stand and preach. It is not the easiest thing in the world to do. And standing in front of people is not my forte either. I'd just like to give a little background, but before I do that, just remember what Darren preached a few weeks ago when he was on about witnessing. And I felt for poor old Terry because he said at the time, really, if you witness, to give you a testimony, it only needs to be 30 seconds. So I looked at Dan, I said, well, that gives Terry one minute and he'll need to fill the rest. Of course, Darren was talking in the context of witnessing the people out in the street, etc., or at work, where it's a condensed version. But what we are doing today, I'd like to take you on a journey, my journey from my childhood further up, if you can bear with me and understand my accent, because as you can gather, I'm not from this area. So I was born and brought up in Gateshead, in Tyne and Weir, or County Durham as it once was. I was brought up in a Christian family. Uh, we attended a Methodist church who, on a new council housing estate, which was modern for that time, with all mod cons that had a bathroom and a toilet, kitchen, etc. And the central heating was a fire in the sitting room, but that was modern in those days. And we used to attend church. Then it was the old church hall. Uh, it was in a mining community, so obviously you had the primitive Methodist churches and the Wetherlands. And obviously it was the background of the miners who used to go to these churches. And our church, I believe, at the time was just this hall uh, at the centre of this new housing estate. And we started to go, I mean, I would only be four or five. And mum and dad would take, I had an older sister, and would take us there on a Sunday morning, come home, have lunch, go in the afternoon for Sunday school, come home, go in the evening service. Even though as young, we were still taking the evening service. And this went on for years and years, and obviously grew amongst friends within the church of my own age group. And then we had a new church building, and we were involved, my father was involved in the, what was called the Life Boys, which was the Junior Boys Brigade. So I was getting teaching, but it was only coming here, it wasn't coming here. So we would listen to the service, and as I say, it was a Methodist church who had visiting preachers, so you had a different minister, each different speaker each week, morning and evening. And I remember as I was getting older, I wouldn't recommend this to anyone. We sort of started, because we were getting older, we could sit in the back row, and you tend, when it came to the sermon, we tend to switch off. And our ceiling in the church had like plastic strips along, which had white plastic with little black gaps in between. And I remember, I can't tell you now, but we used to try and count the number of strips on the ceiling, not listening to the word. And so that's what was going to church at the time to me. And then as I got a bit older, um, left school, went to work, uh, got my first car. And on a Sunday morning in December, for no known reason, I thought, oh, let's go down. To, I've never been before in my life. Let's go down to Croft Autodrome in County Durham. So a friend of mine, we went off in my van down to this place, well planned. If you listen to any preacher, they always say planning, preparation, prepare, plan. None of that, spontaneous, right, let's go there. So I thought, so I went there to find it was cancelled. There was no event on. So I thought, what do we do? And I thought, never thought of this before. Let's go to the ice rink. So I went all the way back up to Newcastle, to Whitley Bay, and this is on a Sunday, to the ice rink. And I saw these two girls skating around in a circle. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, one of them was on. So there was me from Gateshead going to go down south, ended up going north to Whitley Bay. And I saw this girl skating on her ice rink who had no idea who she was. And I was 17 coming towards 18. And I never ever had a girlfriend as such. I never take anybody home with the parents. But so on, and because I couldn't skate, got these two young boys to 
bring her across to the side. And I said to her, well, we like to go out type of thing. And she said, oh, well, I'm going to church tonight. And I said, that's fine, I'll come with you. And I don't know what Anne thought of her at the time, but I think she was a bit surprised. Anyhow, it didn't happen. And um, it was Anne's birthday later in that week. And unfortunately for Anne, for a laugh, she decided to give me a phone call. So she did, and out of Anne's little laugh, we met up, we went out, wanted to meet my parents, and then, as I say, the rest is history. But we started to, I started to go out, went out of church in the mornings, but the church I went to, which was in Castle City Mission, it was in Biker in the east end of Newcastle, quite a deprived area. Uh, they had held their service in the evening. So we went to the Methodist Church in the morning at Lean Lane, and then the evening we'd go across to uh, Newcastle City Mission. In the past, there was a, a chap called Les McPherson. And things were quite formal in those days. We called him Mr. McPherson. We didn't call them Les or anything like that. And like the, the elderly people of the congregation was Mr. Archibald, Mrs. Archibald, no first names. But the pre I, I noticed the teaching was different. It was more direct. It was it wasn't wishy washy. It was had structure to it, and it was telling me about my need to be saved, basically. And when, over the period of weeks and months, obviously there's another the nucleus of young people in this church, around slightly younger than Anne and I, and uh, there would be about seven or eight of us. And after the evening service, we'd go back to the pastor's house in the evening with his wife, and we'd have what called a squash, a fellowship, where we'd sing choruses, study the word, have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or juice, whatever. And we'd be talking and speaking around the word. And after a number of weeks, the pastor, quite a shrewd guy, turned around to me and said, well, this is something I've never had in my life. I've never been challenged. No one ever come to me. Not that I say you should put no people, but I've never been sort of challenged, where are you going in your Christian life? Or are you seeking God? I've never been challenged that way. And this pastor, Les McPherson, said to me this Sunday evening, you know, where, where do you stand? And it was a passage in Romans, which we've been looking at. By my notes. Sorry, it was Matthew. Showed you how well I was listening. It was Matthew chapter 16 and verse 15 and 16. And this pastor said to me, says, David, who do you say that he is? And I answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, as I say, we've been brought up in a, a church environment, going through the routine, because that's what it was to me. It was just the routine of going to church Sunday by Sunday. Um, I didn't have, like Paul, a miraculous conversion, but the scales were removed from my eyes that evening. And we knelt down in this room, around the sofa, and prayed that night. And like Anne said to her, to herself, it just felt that burden lifted off me that peace. And funny enough, after then, going to church wasn't a chore. I really was, I, you know, I'd be really looking forward to going to the Tuesday night uh, prayer meeting and Bible study, looking forward to Sundays, looking forward to the Thursday when we had the youth club. And I had that real joy, one, to go and enjoy the, the message and to meet with God's people. As we heard, I think it was a, last week about fellowship. It's the building up of each other being together in the fellowship, it supports us, it gives us strength and comfort as well, but encourages us as well. And this is what we found. And then in obedience to scripture, I was married, not in obedience to scripture, but I was married in July 73. And then in the November of 73, it was Saturday the 10th at a place called Somerville Chapel, because our City Mission Church didn't have a baptistry. So we went to some of the chapel in Long Benton in Newcastle where they had a baptistry. And there were seven of us that night who were uh, baptized. 
Now, if you imagine, normally in a baptismal service, you would normally have a hymn after each person. So it was quite a long service. But there's no such thing as coincidence. I went down to the croft that day, then I didn't. I went back on. We baptised at Somerville, and the pastor there was a chap called David Hollinshead. And in discussions re recently with Bob Telford, discovered he was a close friend of Bob's. He was a dear friend of Bob's. So there again, over the years, many years ago, there was someone I knew then. He's unfortunately, with, well, fortunately, he's with the Lord. But he was a good close friend of Bob's. And so it went on from there. Anna and I became, in, we were married. We were only new married couple in the church. We got involved in the children's work as Anne said, it was her forte. I'd, I wasn't quite as patient as Anne with children, or it was quite irritating me at times. I say, Biker was quite a rough area, but the children, they were brilliant. And they would come week by week, they were challenging. And we were given the, the great opportunity one year to take them to Spain. Now, I'd never been abroad in my life. We planned to go for our honeymoon, but uh, we got an opportunity of a, of a rented flat, so obviously that came first. So anyway, umpteen years later, there's this opportunity. There were there was six children, eight children? Seven children. Anne and I, the pastor and his wife, and our friend Alan, who we're still obviously close contact with, we, were, we got a bus from Newcastle all the way down to Victoria. Victoria got another coach to Heathrow. And we flew out on, I think it was a Lockheed TriStar jet for those who were into jets, big wide body plane. We flew all the way to Alicante in Spain. And we spent 10 days, I believe, out in Spain. We had a villa, a hired car, uh, and we spent 10 days with those children in a Christian environment, sharing God's word every morning, giving thanks at every meal time and just living our lives as an example to these children. And I mean, these children, a lot of them had never been out of Biker, never mind out of the country. And just to see their faces when they were going to play, one girl, she was huddled, I shut all the way. And to think of the trust of the parents to trust their children with us to go to another country, I just couldn't understand that. But anyhow, we, we had this great holiday where we, we spent time with the children around God's word. And on the Sunday, there was a town nearby called Denia, where there's a church which was known to the pastor's wife. And uh, we went there on the Sunday evening, it was prepared for us. And there was some American evangelists there at the time. And they did a, a children's puppet service for our children. So that part was in English, but the rest we were singing, and can it be, but with Spanish words. I'm not sure about the pronunciation of our voices, but uh, it says in the Bible, make a joyful noise. It doesn't say have to be tuneful. So that was just the rough background. But God has been faithful over all the years we've had. It never promises that life's going to be peaceful and easy. It's not a bed of roses. You will have trials and temptations. Things will happen and you have struggles. You have a family we've brought up. But God's always been there. He's the one constant throughout our lives. We may be go hot or cold. God never does. He's constant throughout. And he's always been faithful. And for that we give thanks. And then as Anne said, seven, seven years ago, we travelled down to Coventry. The job I had at the time, I was working in a pharmacy. I was working stupid hours. It wasn't doing my health any good either. And when I had to come down, and I think it was the September, I was still at home and I ended up in hospital for about a week with a stomach complaint. It was all just down, all purely down to stress because I was trying to do things on my own strength, not in God's strength. So if we look at Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six.
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. So we feel that was God's leading bringing us down to Coventry. We had two reasons, one probably for my health and the other one was to spend more time with our steward who's married, living down here with his wife and three children and they attend Emmanuel at Leamington. So it was to time, spend more time with them. And then we were living, unknown to me, living in rented accommodation, shared rented accommodation with other people. And that was a strange environment for me. But we managed, and as I say, I had employment, I worked at B&Q. And then we finally were able to buy, sell our house up north. And we were looking for a house down here. And I said to Anne, she said one day, oh, I've seen this flat. I said, well, that's fine. As long as it's downstairs. There's no way I'm going to live in an upstairs flat. Again, me. And uh, as it turned out, there's two flats we could go to see. One was Eastfield Green, I think it is, just back on the A45, which was a downstairs flat. And the other one is the one in Dulverton Avenue, which was an upstairs flat. And we saw Dulverton first and it looked quite nice. I saw this other one in Eastfield Green, it needed it was such a mess. It would have been a beautiful home, but it was in just such a mess. So we felt that Dulverton Avenue was a house for us. And, uh, in September 2009-16, yeah, we moved into Dulverton Avenue. I was still working at being cute at the time and because of shifts working Sundays, it wasn't ideal. And then uh, Anne was looking after, helping her sister look after her, her niece. So Anne retired earlier than myself. And uh, she fell in fellowship here. Anne and I came a few times. And I, I remember, I think possibly one of the first times I came here, I was on crutches. I think the first time I might have come with a cast on, I'm not sure. But I came in this Sunday morning on crutches and I thought they tore my foot. And a certain member of the congregation refers to me as, oh, that's a chap on crutches. And I, you'll know who I'm talking about. But he said, oh, yeah, that's the lad that comes in on crutches. And anyhow, so then I retired and we were able to attend regularly on a Sunday. And we found a warmth, a welcome. So thank you to you all. You made us very welcome. It was like coming home. And I don't know how it feels for yourselves, but it feels like we've never been away now. But it's really been good to be here. But just to go back through some verses in scripture to like a, a conclusion and a recap. If you think of God's mercy, we look at uh, 1 Peter chapter one. Verse 3, praise to be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So because of God's great mercy in sending his son, he has given us that life. No fear of death anymore. We have that assurance of faith. I was going to take, Anne stole one of my texts before when she was talking about time of salvation. Now is the time of salvation. When I was younger, I'd say, that's when I'm getting a bit older, a bit later on in life. But I mean, if anything, COVID's shown us one thing, there's no such thing in life as certainty. Our days are numbered, yes, but we don't know when that day is. And we've seen the terrible figures on the TV screen every day, the number of deaths caused through COVID. These people didn't expect this. Were they prepared for God? We don't know. My challenge today is, are you prepared for God? Have you made that step of faith? You don't have to be brilliant. It's nothing to do with ourselves. It's just simply God's grace. God says, come unto me, all who you are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And indeed he does. So I'd just like to give thanks to God today for all that he has done for Anne and I in our lives. And may he bless you all. Thank you.